I think he's having more success being the southpaw. He should maybe get his left hand up a bit, his right hand up a bit more, start playing the jabs. Because Vernon Phillips is getting a little bit frustrated. When he goes southpaw, he, he, can, turn him, he can turn him around. And Phillips is missing with his own. As you see, his left uppercuts, his left hands and his right hands. Uh, and he's having more success being a southpaw rather than going off about Interesting change. It's I assume he's won it. I'm sure he's well ahead on points. We've seen stranger things happen, but but let's say he does go on to win this contest, then build up a few defences, get back into the um, swing of things, and then maybe over the challenge at the world title. Jones Tony is now getting him onto the ropes, which is where he wants him. South Africa's legs really again looking wobbly. The body moving one way, the legs beginning to move another. South Africa to retain his WBO Intercontinental title, the one that permits him to challenge for the senior version. Stated Phillips rather than declare the title vacant. Nonetheless, Paul Silky Jones, the WBO Intercontinental Champion, is the challenger and almost walked onto a pretty useful looking right he wants hand. To mix it. He can stand there and mix it as well with him. But I still think he's better, better on the outside, switch it again. Good jab with his left hand, good jab with his right hand. And Phillips is not getting anything his own way. Jones is, when Phillips wants to mix it, Jones is mixing it as well. Phillips now, uh, the mouth open is uh, breathing fairly heavily. Jones back to Southpaw again. The pace, as you would imagine, has just uh, relented a little. That he was caught then with a swinging right hand by uh, Tushuma. So again, Jones leading so far. Silky Jones in the black trunks, the Schuma in the blue. It's a great tag team, he's switching, I think he's having more success being the southpaw. He should maybe get his left hand up a bit, his right hand up a bit more, start playing the jabs. Because Vernon Phillips is getting a little bit frustrated. When he goes southpaw, he, he, can, turn him, he can turn him around. And Phillips is to make up his mind just exactly what route to take. Whether to take a chance or to try and tough it out. Well, certainly it's been a hectic pace. And one, as we said earlier, we don't think they can keep up. It. Maybe they have like a couple of years out of his because he is now a much more impressive performance than we thought we were going to see tonight. We thought it was going to be tentative. We thought it would go the distance, but it really has uh, not quite been a war, but it's not been far short of it. Silky Jones, of course, knows that at this stage of his career, so this is a positive opening. Well, I think Paul Silky Jones is, is going to make it an exciting fight tonight, or certainly try and make it a more convincing fight for him. He was wasn't happy with being called with it being called a boring fight last time. He wants it to be exciting for the television tonight. Well, he on, on paper, sorry, sorry, Tim. I was just going to say on paper, neither of, the, of these boxes are really devastating punches. But Silky Jones over the last year or two has done here. It must be as he comes forward. Well, very short uppercut. Of all the punches we've seen, Tim, this one looked probably one of the softest. But the Schumer didn't see it coming, and it had the effect. Well, we saw the effect. Very, very nice. Both boys are really tired and down to who wants the most. If somebody can assert an authority here, they've got a fair chance of looking out in front. Well, Jones now maybe feels that if he stands toe to toe, he's going to be as good as Phillips in the punching sticks. The referee trying to step in and then changes his mind. A little bit of a slack refereeing. Years ago to the day, lost to John David Jackson. So far in the previous 11. So Silky Jones maintaining control in the center of the ring, forcing his man around the outside to use up even more. 
chance if he has any strength left. He's taken some exquisite shots from Silky Jones. And Jones chasing him around the corner. And once again, the flailing arms of the South African reach out to try and tie up his opponent. He's got nothing left. in the ring straight away and what a performance Paul Silky Joan has produced somebody who is really not rated in the world at all and uh, well, we have to rely on the judges I think Paul Silky Jones is going to be the new champion well, not too much in the way of uh, emotion on that uh, face of Verno Phillips but in his heart of hearts I think it's bye bye belt Ladies and gentlemen, we have a split decision. Judge Nelson Vasquez scores the contest 113 points to both boxers. Judge Cesar Ramos scores the contest 113 to 114. Judge Roy Francis draws the contest 111 points to 116. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and the new WBO. Oh, a split decision. And for the first time, the face of the 29-year-old last Sunday, Paul Silky Jones, gives way to tears of genuine emotion mixed with tears of delight. What a moment for him, what a moment for Sheffield. Three years ago he was knocked out by Paul Wesley in two rounds. He said bye-bye boxing and now it's hello world title and hello fame. And ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation please. For the Daisy of the arm of Paul Silky Jones who wins the belt that he thought he should have won back last October when he lost by half a point. But Nicky, that was a consummate performance. Yes, quite right. Jones did complain of the last one, but there was no doubt the, the last one was close, but maybe a fair decision. You couldn't really argue against it, but this time, emphatic. He really, really boxed so well. He was more powerful. He was fitter. He was more aggressive. And uh, certainly he showed that he really wanted to win tonight and, and thoroughly deserved to. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee Larry O'Connell scores a contest 100 to Johnson Schumer, 119 to Paul Silky Jones, the winner and the new Commonwealth Blueway Champion, Paul Silky Jones. Well, um, I, I'm not so sure that the, uh, Alan Hughes, the MC, announced the scorecards correctly. 19 point victory. He won it emphatically. Maybe a 100. 1910, not 100 uh, to Well, as the belt is placed around uh, the waist of Paul's Silky Jones, it's as we said, a good start for British Boxing Week, and we could have a glut of belts at the end of this week, but it's a good way to get the week out of the way. Certainly is, and Silky Jones won't care who the other boxers are, who else is fighting for titles, he's got that one and it's wrapped around his belt. Right, where does he go from here? WBO Light Middleweight Championship of the World and the WBO Light Middleweight Champion. Three years ago you gave it up, you were stopped in two rounds. Yeah. Glad you changed your mind. Well, Freddie King had a lot to do with that. There was a little phone call to come down and spar. I didn't fancy it, I didn't fancy it really, but I needed the money. Flat broke and I went down and said, I want you to fight again. I, d I didn't really want to fight again. He got me a fight and then, you know, after two years out of the ring, ten months, I'm world champion. <laughs> a dream come true? A dream come true. I, but, you know, I couldn't have done it without my manager, Barry Hearns, my, my train, other trainer, Alice Gower, my running conditioner. Oh, amazing. San, Sandy Ridgeway. Oh, thank you, everyone. Sheffield supported me. Thank you, Sheffield, for supporting me. The first time I've had a major fight in Sheffield, and they all got behind me. Beautiful <laughs> town. We're putting the steel back into Sheffield. A lot of hearts were in mouths when you were down in the seat of your pants in the first round. What happened then? He caught me. He gave, I got a bit of respect. 
for him after that and I, and I boasted my capabilities. He broke my eardrum, I believe. My left ear, 